to call the Transportation and Commerce Committee meeting to order. Could you please take the roll? Alderman Boyd? Present. Alderman Moore? Alderman Rapallo? Present. Alderman Cohen? Present. Alderman Muhammad? Alderman Oldenburg? Present. Alderwoman Middlebrook? Present. Chairwoman Davis? Present. Alderman Moore, Alderman Muhammad, you have six present. Thank you. Um, I'd like mm -hmm. to. Do we have a quorum? I mean, yeah. this is a quorum. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So let's uh, start our meeting. Um, do we have some excuse all the person? Okay, thank you. And then uh, I'd like to review the minutes from the last. Uh, so no action was taken on the May 15th meeting minutes and you do have those now before you. Have you had an opportunity to uh, read them? If we make it, take a motion on them, we to approve the minutes. Second. It's been moved and second to accept the minutes from our May 15th meeting. Six. June 16th. Well, I'm looking at May 15th. That's what I'm trying to do. Because we didn't take action on those before. Oh, okay. Yeah. So should we make a motion? So I'd like to have a motion for the May 15th minutes. Because we didn't have them before us at the last meeting. And, and now we do. And, I'd like to go ahead and get those passed before we go to the next set. We can make a motion to accept all the previous minutes. <laughs> then we'll cover them both. So I'll make that motion. One second. Okay, but that's not an appropriate motion. That's and I won't accept it. Okay, well then I won't make it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we try it. <laughs> I thought I'd try it. All right. I move that we approve the May 15th, 2019 meeting. I'll no, second that. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> do we have to do a roll call? So we shall do one. Alderman Boyd? Aye. Alderman Moore? Alderman Bacaro? Aye. Alderman Cohn? Aye. Alderman Muhammad? Alderman Oldenburg? Aye. Alderman Middlebrook? Aye. Chairwoman Davis. Aye. Alderman Moore, Alderman Muhammad, you have six aye votes. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, approved our minutes from May 15th. Now we have before us the minutes from the June 6th meeting. And uh, before I ask for a motion, I see several things that I believe should be added to the minutes. Mm -hmm. And I shall consult here with the clerk as I uh, give my concerns. One is, on action items that are requested by members of the committee, they should be included in our minutes. Mm -hmm. So, um, for Board Bill 19, I know that, the, uh, that we asked for the correct information to be uh, put in this board bill, because it refers to 2012 instead of 2018. And then it was also uh, also Alderman Vaccaro had asked to have his name added to this bill as a sponsor. 
And so in the, after um, Attorney Bush, the city councilor spoke uh, about his uh, <coughs> suggestions on, well, rather his legal opinion, which he said it was questionable at that moment, he would go back and review it more. I think that needs to be clarified, because it wasn't an absolute. Okay, anybody else have anything? Hearing no other concerns, Chair accepts the motion. I move to. Do we need the updated minutes before we make the motion? Then? We do. Okay, so. We can get them to you by the next meeting. Okay, they'll be fine. We'll have them at the next meeting then. So now, uh, the first item on our agenda for today, and I'm going to tell you something, I don't know if it's in our rules, mm -hmm. but on most uh, boards I sit on, we approve our agenda. Right, it's not in the It's not in our rules. Okay, I just want to check. Okay. <clears throat> so the first uh, board bill for review is board bill number 19. Those are other one, please. Madam uh, Chairwoman and members of the Transportation and Commerce Committee, uh, Board Bill 19, as you know, is calling for a public vote should the city decide to move forward with the privatization of our airport. I've given a lot of testimony to this committee uh, over the last year, um, so I will save the bulk of uh, what I've said before uh, instead of rehashing it. But what I'd like to do instead is commend the director of our airport, who is here with us today. Um, and go over some of the stats uh, of the airport that may or may not be uh, known to the members of the committee. 2018 was the first year since uh, St. Louis uh, Lambert lost its hub status that we had more outgoing local travelers than we have had in the last two decades. In fact, we had over 5.6 million local uh, uh, passengers from St. Louis leaving our airport, which is the, we surpassed our 2,000 numbers last year, which is really quite remarkable. Uh, the airport has been growing every single year uh, for the last several years, and over the last 10 years, we've seen a 20% increase in St. Louis's total outbound passengers. This is under local control, our local leadership here um, in St. Louis. Um, and so I think that's really commendable. Um, I think we ought to be celebrating the leadership we have at our airport and the, um, the incredible success that we've had. <clears throat> St. Louis um, in, was recently uh, uh, given the distinguishment of having been the only airport to completely have lost its hub status by losing TWA and having regained a hub site status with another carrier, Southwest. That is quite remarkable to be the only airport to completely rebound from that. A sort of devastating loss. Um, and so we're really lucky to have our airport improving um, at the rate at which it's improving, especially considering our regional economy, which during that exact same time frame has stagnated and not moved forward at all. Um, <clears throat> the importance of Board Bill 19 in involving the general public could not be overstated. Um, you know, as we've talked about before, the only airport on mainland United States that has gone private uh, in New York um, has subsequently reverted back to public ownership. Uh, that is because the private operator pulled out of that agreement, their choice to pull out of that uh, pri private privatization uh, agreement, and that cost the local taxpayers almost $80 million to recoup that. And that is just a jump start. It was $74.5 million that it cost those local taxpayers, according to local uh, news reports in that area. So privatization of our airport, our largest city municipal asset, is really putting um, our tax dollars in a significant amount of risk. And for that reason, I think that we owe the general public 
uh, uh, the ability to weigh in on what uh, we as a city decide to do uh, with, with our airport. This bill does not set forth a date for a vote, um, and that is for good reason, and that is to give respect to those who are looking to potentially engage in a privatization agreement with the city. We do not know the timeline uh, for the, moving that forward, therefore we cannot decide when we'll have enough information to put before the general public for an educated vote. But what this bill does say is that we will have a public vote. City Council weighed in that there may be a question as to whether or not that vote could be binding. And that is uh, a matter that could be decided uh, by the courts, of course. However, regardless of whether or not it is binding, a public vote would, of course, be advisory to all of us in this room who have the capacity to vote on the Board of Aldermen and vote on a bill uh, on behalf of our citizens and our taxpayers. So whether or not it would be binding, it of course would be a good idea to take a general vote and be advised uh, what the general public wants to see with their largest public, publicly owned asset. And with that, uh, Madam Chairwoman, I'll take questions um, and defer to the Committee on Action on the Board Bill. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Um, I support the bill. Uh, I love our airport. I just have one question for the director for the about the director oh, for sure. the director about our airport. Um, or we are, go ahead, Rhonda, if you don't mind, and just tell everybody who you are, Rhonda, please. Uh, Rhonda Hamid, I'm the air director for St. Louis Lambert International Airport. What international flights leave St. Louis? What international flights? We have the Canada flights in and out of Toronto, and then we have five different Caribbean markets. So we have Cancun, Montego Bay, and some of them float. I think right now it's Costa Rica, Puerto Vallarta, and Punta Cana. But some of those float depending on the Apple Charter. So <coughs> Cancun and Frontier, I mean, uh, Southwest and Frontier have daily Cancun service year round. And then Air Canada has the three a daily to Toronto. And then the other international activity comes with Apple vacations, and those are flown by a variety of different vendors. And those are direct flights? Yes, nonstop. Um, I remember when I was a kid growing up, we were known as International Airport, and we had military flights. Going on. Do we have any military flights that go out? They call them hops back in the day. Sure. We still have military aircraft all the time and military <laughs> activity. So it's not scheduled. It's, uh, you know, we accommodate it when we get calls from the military. But we do see military activity, both in terms of, of passengers moving military-wise, as well as cargo military. Okay. Um, are you familiar with you familiar with the hops, right? Yeah. Does that still go on? It's a different program than what it used to be, so I don't know. Uh, I don't believe it's referred to anymore as that. Uh huh. But we still do see military activity. Okay. Do you know who I could talk to about those? No. We'll talk I'm offline. Okay. But, okay. Well, thank you. I pre I, and, and I do appreciate the job that you do out there at the board. And I think we all on the committee should have a uh, parking pass so we don't have to <laughs> get those little <laughs> special tickets. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Rhonda. You're welcome. <laughs> For clarity, that's not part of the board bill. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have taken those direct flights to Cancun and yeah. through Apple. Yeah. It's really nice. Okay. Why don't you stay there, because there might be more questions for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, uh, uh, Alderman Vaccaro. I, I think I expressed my feelings last time. And, uh, you know, I'm on both part. I, I do think that the problems are going to be the challenges. I'm glad to see that, uh, you know, you got a charter change, and I know that uh, you agreed to work with Megan and you know, the one that we have. So, I... I have concerns about it, but certainly I put my name on it. I'm fine with it. I just have a lot of concerns about it. I appreciate that, and I will uh, like to be on the record to say that I'll support your bill. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to get, yeah, I think the charter changes the way to solve it. I agree, and I, I'll, I'll be with you on that. Okay, uh, Alderman Collins. No questions. Okay, uh, Alderman Oldenburg. Thank you, Alderwoman. Um, what were those those 
can you just repeat those stats earlier? You sure. were you were I rattling think off about like. TWA's vacancy and Southwest replacing yes. or whatever that was. I, I think that um, Director Hamburg would be better at speaking. Sure, to these maybe than she I would. can corroborate your stats. <laughs> well, I can because I got them directly. Well, there you have. <laughs> that, that was a good place to get them, um, but um, you know, I guess. Uh, uh, according to traffic and trend review um, in 2018, St. Louis has the distinction of being the only airport to have completely lost a major airline hub, TWA, and having regained the hub site status with another air, with another carrier being Southwest Airlines. And uh, all the person that was a uh, last year the the FAA deems that if 25 percent of your traffic is connecting on a single carrier, <coughs> then that is a hub status. And so when you look at the, with the growth of Southwest and the growth of the connecting traffic, uh, that has pushed us to that 25% mark of connecting traffic. And so that's where that uh, FAA status came from. And I think the report that she's referring to came out from uh, one of the industry analysts who quoted that in his uh, report of year-end passenger trends and where that's coming. And on the local market, <coughs> The peak year of our hub was 2000, and last year we actually exceeded the number of local passengers than we did in the peak year of the TWA hub. So I think that is a is a pretty important statistic. I think that some of the some of that is that we have a, a very strong support right now from the business community, and obviously the, the overall economy. I think from a business perspective was strong last mm -hmm. year. So we saw great support from the business community allowing their employees to travel for meetings uh, versus maybe doing some of the other uh, opportunities like video or ch web chatting or webinars. So I think that's been a, a huge piece. But to see the number of local passengers actually exceed the number of local passengers during our peak uh, year of the hub was a pretty, a pretty important stat. Got it. So it was the 25% kind of threshold that really puts you into being, being considered a hub status. But, but more importantly, underscoring that local passengers um, exceeded where we were in our, in our peak in the, in the early 2000s with TWA. That's correct. Wow, okay, great. I can share this with you. I'll just pass it around. Please excuse the coffee stains, but um, we can get you an electronic version without them. Great. That's perfect. Um, I have no further questions. Uh, Alderman Middlebrook. I have no questions. Okay. Uh, I just have a couple, just for clarity. So, um, on, for, let me give a whole lot of clarity first and then I'm going to spill. Our airport has the ability to be a super airport based on the work that has been done, most especially the last 10 years and how we sit in the market now. So there's no doubt that our airport will continue to thrive. It may thrive at different levels depending on how much money we have to invest, uh, how much uh, opportunity we get through cap and other things and how you gain money to invest in different things, uh, how the airlines continue to have the best concern for our airports, and that's another biggie that we have in our favor our airlines really do want to uh, be here and they want to assist us in moving forward uh, in the best way possible. So that's another good thing for, the, uh, for our airport. So no one questions that. No one has anything <coughs> ill to say about management because it has been outstanding and I do believe it will continue to be outstanding under any circumstances that we find ourselves in in the future uh, because they know what they're doing. There's no doubt about that. Uh, people like me who are extremely uh, critical, <laughs> when I say good things, people know I mean it because it's hard to get that out of me. Because I, I just nip it. I can't help myself. That's who I am. That's how I was born. But uh, I find um, I found a lot of good things that have happened, uh, most especially in the last three years. Irregardless to uh, the economy, what was that in the 16? We kind of dropped a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but that that was that had nothing to do with the operations of the airport. 
Uh, so um, I want to clear that up because I think a lot of people have put some misinformation out here that um, this exploration process is uh, targeting the management and it is absolutely not doing that. It is a process that's used uh, just like you would look at your home if you were going to take out a second mortgage and you wanted to do some improvements. That's all it is. And if it doesn't look right, if the numbers are not right, then you don't do it. If all the things that are required in this process are not right, you don't do it. And I've said that a number of times. I've walked away from the table once already. I don't have a problem walking away again if it's necessary to get people to understand that we will do this right. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm just looking to see what is there. It's an exploration process. And I don't think most people understand that part of it. It has been misinformation got out ahead of uh, what was really going on, saying that we were going to sell the airport, which is not possible under the law. You can't sell the airport. Uh, I also wanted to share with you that as we continue to move forward, um, we appear to be going down another road of confusion. And so that's where I get to Board Bill 19. So we were asked to, cl to clear this up, to clean it up. And uh, the sponsor spoke with the attorney in the committee meeting, um, and they agreed to do that. And it's still not done. We've asked, we asked that the last time, and it still wasn't done. I'm not going to take a vote on something that doesn't have the correct information in it. And until that's done, there's no reason to do that. The second part to this is, and um, I need to ask, and I'll ask the clerk how I officially go about this. There's another bill. I, can, I don't know if it was read, first read last week or the week before, but there's another bill, right, that you're currently sponsoring, referring to a vote from the public. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, yeah, the um, second bill uh, at the request of one of the committee members was uh -huh. to look at a charter change that would require a, a vote of the people before a vote on privatization. So uh, it's a little more of a, a long process. Um, so a charter amendment change to require a public vote in the event that we privatize the airport would require a vote first. You know, as a charter change is required to have uh -huh. a public vote. Okay, so um, so that is a, a, a second way of doing it. Um, okay. It is a longer way of doing it. Um, it. But that's what the attorney was referring to. But he wasn't. He didn't want to give an absolute opinion <coughs> at that moment. And he didn't. You're right. And he did. Uh, he did say that this ordinance could be challenged. And my response to that, which I was unable to give at that particular hearing, was that uh, while there is a possibility that this ordinance could be considered or determined to be uh, that the vote would be non-binding, it would be advisory, certainly, to the deliberative body here, the Board of Aldermen, who would ultimately have a say by way of a vote uh, on the privatization of the airport. So again, if the attorney, dis if, if uh, it is determined that the public vote is non-binding, it would exist in an advisory role to the Board of Aldermen. Would you like me to repeat that or kind of oh, maybe say it in a different not. way? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm exactly where I was. Sure. So, um, what I'd like to do, what I'd like to do is to ask the, uh, ask for the other board bill to be assigned as soon as possible to committee. Uh, and again, I'm not sure because I didn't pay, I wasn't, uh, I was, you know, I was busy last week. so. I don't know if it was just first read last week or the week before, but it needs to be assigned to committee. We need to um, get this bill cleaned up and or you make a decision on what it is that you're trying to do. Because to me, there's a conflict here. And um, uh, the bills are not in conflict. Uh, they can happen simultaneously and both be passed by the Board of Aldermen without conflict. The ordinance 
requiring a vote um, could certainly be passed by the Board of Aldermen, giving the public uh, assurance that we would have a vote in the event that we would have uh, the airport privatized. The charter amendment change could also be put before voters at a determined time, say the next general election, which is quite some number of months from now. Um, those two things can happen simultaneously without conflict. So um, I'm happy to entertain them both and move them both forward. Um, and I think they both have merit um, and they both have utility and they both have assurances to the general public. Yes, sir. Just a question. So it's 19, we passed 19 out. It would require a special election. That's not exactly true. Um, well, the next election isn't until the same time. I'm just, and, and I'm not trying to understand my own mind. Mm -hmm. So the next election isn't the same election that we could do a charter amendment would also be equal to the same as this one, or either one or both would require a special election. I am unaware of the timeline that the privatization process is moving forward. So it is unknown to me at this point when we're going to have an offer, so to speak, or a, an RFP. We cannot put, under Board Bill 19, we cannot put anything before the voters until we have a proposal for them. And I, like many, unless somebody from the committee can clarify when we're going to have the RFP, which is something I think we could all benefit from knowing, but I don't think we have the facts We don't know that point. as a committee, because right. we haven't even put out an RFQ yet. Well, no, so but, from but, that perspective, we don't know. But, but, but let's just say for just, I'll throw the number out. So in June of next year, they decide they may try to do this. Yes. OK, I know it's not a real date. Then we would have to put together the language for ballot language and hold a special election. Wouldn't that be the same as the charter amendment would require? Like, I mean, either one, wouldn't it be about the same timeline? That could be the case. You're right. That could so be I, the case. I'm just, I was in my own, I, that's all, I'm just curious. You're right. That could be the case. And I think the possibility of having a special election does exist. If, for example, we move forward more quickly and as an, as an effort to move the privatization forward, it is desired by those who are keen to private to want to privatize the airport that they would like to move this along faster. They could, for example, call a special election. But the ordinance is just a hypothetical in this case. It would be very similar to saying, if we decided to sell City Hall, we would first put it before the voters. And that doesn't mean that we're planning on selling City Hall, that we have any timeline to do it, or that we're even entertaining it. Much in the same way, the privatization of the airport at this point is still hypothetical, and we don't have a timeline, we don't have a plan, we don't have any well, I I details all that, but I just thought, I was just trying to clear it in my own head, but I thought it would be the same. It could be. Timeline. It could oh, yes. be. It could be. That's correct. I agree uh, with that. Okay, I'm sorry. You, no, I'm done. I'm just curious. Um, yeah, just to kind of piggyback on <clears throat> Alderman Vicaro, I would think that if we have to have a special election, I would appreciate those who are bringing forth the idea would pay for it so that it doesn't come out of our general revenue. Pay for I, the... Pay yes. for the special election. So the, the, somewhere within the ordinance or somewhere within the proposal, they would need to have to agree to pay for the special election. But if we're round a little bit, what if they say no? Well, then... I mean, they say, well, we're not going to pay for well, it. Then, so then, then, then I think it would die. If we say that we want to have a, the, the voters vote on it, and they say they're not going to pay for it, then the voters are not going to vote on it. So and you're you saying they, the people... The who people who put the proposal for it to privatize. Okay. Right, right. Well, well I guess my confusion so. So we put in the bill that they would have to pay for the special election. But what if they say, well, we're not going to pay for the special election, then that election doesn't take place, then the privatization moves on without No, it does not. If we say that you cannot enter to a lease agreement with without the airport vote. without okay. a vote of the people, that is what it is. And if we say... If, you're, if you propose this, you must pay for a special election. And that's a different And they deal. say, I'm not going to pay for a special election, then it's dead. 
Yeah, but that's a different deal. That's not what we have. And I think we're within our and I know that's not what's before us, but I'm just. I just I thought this like was a common I'm no, just sir, a conversation, I I you like know, that. so that if we can make whether it's this bill or another bill, or a whole different bill, um, I think that is something we should certainly consider, so that we won't be on the hook by paying for a special election. I, I, this bill doesn't require that the city pays for it. This bill. Simply, no, I do. I agree. And it, and you know, honestly, we don't know what. Um, uh, private uh, private operator is going to offer the city. Mm -hmm. um, that is part of the negotiations that's mm -hmm. going to take place between SLDC and and, and the consultants the and the airlines, etc. And that needs to be baked in. You know, we've seen reports that the consultants are currently getting paid somewhere in the ballpark of eight hundred thousand dollars a month. We have contracts that total outward payments of $675,000 on retainers right now. So, you know, to hold a special election would cost a couple hundred thousand dollars, would be really pennies in the bucket compared to what the consultants are already dishing out for this effort. And I would hope, much like you, that that would be covered by the consultants and certainly not in the negotiations that the city is participating in that the city would agree to do that. That would really be um, a disservice, I think, to taxpayers. I like your idea. Uh, and if you'd like to add that to the bill, um, we could consider no, doing no. that. I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that right now. I just wanted to throw that out there like for consideration. If, if it would make, you know, committee members feel better or even, you know, the members of the board as a whole feel better. I just want to offer that out. That's all. Hmm. Alderman Carl? <laughs> I still don't have any questions or comments. Okay. Um, we're good. Um, but, Madam Chairperson, I, I do need clarity again um, because you're real clear on we cannot, by law, sell the airport. Okay. But we can, by law, lease the airport, can't we? We could. Okay. So, leasing the airport, in my mind, is no different than selling it per se. Because we can lease the management of the airport, but the physical airport yeah. is different. And right. And, right. And, and leasing, go ahead. The, the lease of the airport, uh, if, if that were to happen, then the, the operator would come in and not only have jurisdiction over the operations of the airport, but all the finances of the airport as well. They would have possessory and, rights. And right. And if I may. What is it? The um, possessory rights. But, Right. And what if I may, possessory. possessory rights, okay. okay. And if I may, one of the provisions of the privatization plan, uh, uh, plan under the Trump administration, it's my understanding that they, their private operator would also have um, the power to sell land that is currently owned by the airport at a profit to the private operator. Currently, any uh, real estate transactions that take place that money would have to fold back into airport operations under a privatization agreement. Mm -hmm. Real estate <coughs> transactions could be made at the um, profit to the private operator. Am I correct in that? Real estate transactions. I don't. I'm not sure that the the actual sale of that land because I I don't. You know the the airport does own the land, <coughs> and if that land is sold, a good portion of that land was purchased with noise abatement dollars, mm -hmm. and if that is ever sold, that's why we've always opted to look at long term leases leasing right. of, of of any of our transactions at the airport because if you if you sell land that has uh, noise dollars associated with that gets paid back to the government, so seventy five eighty percent I forget the exact number actually gets returned to the federal government because they were the ones who helped pay for that noise program uh, abatement. So I, I, don't, I, I don't believe, it's my understanding, that that would change. What would change is that the, <clears throat> the, the private operator, if they develop the land, however they choose to either do the development themselves or bring in a developer, obviously all those proceeds would go, all the finances then becomes their control. So where the control, the at the end of the day, is still our airport. The other part to that too is most federal operations, and uh, and I and I say this from experience, uh, with the housing authority, we couldn't sell off land that we own. Yeah. We could give you up to a 99-year lease, but it, that's federal, and it belonged to the federal government, and we couldn't and we could not sell it off. Just like this airport belongs to to really technically the federal government and the city of St. Louis, and there are guidelines there that. 
make it absolutely impossible for you to sell the airport. But in improvement, uh, there's some guidelines that you follow as well. And it's talk, and, and you use the fancy term banker, uh, Alderman <laughs> Alderman. Possessory, possessory <laughs> rights. Possessory <laughs> rights, that's it. But, it all, but in, in any case, if there ever was any kind of agreement, in that agreement, we would also have a clause in there that anything that is done and is done, that's done to hurt not only the airport, but the city of St. Louis and its operation, we can immediately terminate. So there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing there that allows anybody to just take over the airport and do whatever they want to do with our land, our buildings, or anything without consultation from everything, everywhere from the FAA to the airlines. They all have a say-so always. Let me ask so I, I can clarify that. I just pulled up the FAA guidelines on airport privatization. Um, and as part of this, and this is at the FAS, this is um, air, uh, uh, excuse me, options under for Congress. Okay, so under use and sale and lease of proceeds for, for uh, land, under for airports outside of the airport privatization plan, sale or lease proceeds are considered airport revenue and must be used for airport purposes. However, under full privatization, airports can request the Department of Transportation approval in, to use sale or lease proceeds for any non-airport purposes. So it does allow for the sale or lease of lands of, of land under full privatization and the proceeds would go to the private operator. It has it to ask possible. for permission if we say no. No, it is permission of the Department of Transportation and not permission of the city. Okay, this Just is... Just to be clear. Th this is going to bec would become FAA very convoluted because if I'm not mistaken, our charter requires two-thirds of vote of the Board of Aldermen in order to sell real estate. So we will be advocating our responsibility to can. this type of transaction with this hypothetical um, you know, s lease of the airport, mm -hmm. and that would, based on what Julian Bush said, you know, that is something we cannot do. And I'm, and so I'll be curious as to if the federal government can tell us that our local laws and how we govern ourselves on the sale of mm -hmm. real estate would trump mm -hmm. our city charter. Well, you would no longer govern the airport, though. The board, the board of aldermen, wouldn't have governing rights over the airport. Oh. So we give that away, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. They would never have to come get a board bill to do anything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. parking is $20 a day today. Mm -hmm. And let's say hypothetically, mm -hmm. two years from now, there's this private operator. They could make parking $100 a day, and there's nothing we can do about it. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Now, it would have, have to make sense to do that. I mean, I'm not saying there's not other parameters that, you know, if they did, if they went to that extreme, I think there'd be other pushback from other consumers, but, but the Board of Aldermen would have no say-so over things of that nature. Mm -hmm. The governor and the rights would not be through the Board of Aldermen. Mm -hmm. Carriers would also have some consent. To, FAA to, would depending definitely on what have some say-so. I don't know specifically about parking, but yeah. other, any, any other changes, right? Yeah. I mean, right. They, I mean, I think, you know, the, the airlines going forward, there would be, if this were to happen, there, they would have a lease. They, being a private operator, would have a lease with the airlines and in that use and lease agreement although it would not come to this board or to ENA for approval mm -hmm. but there would be a lease agreement with the airlines and, and the airlines do have control over some of those you know because their soup consumers are the ones that mm -hmm. would be impacted so they would have cons they'd have some ability to help say what could be the highest rate used in, in case of parking or concessions or some other things. But it just would not be through the governing board of ENA and or the board of aldermen or transportation and commerce. But to your point, um, parking, much like we saw in Chicago when that went privatized, mm -hmm. the price quadrupled in just a couple of years. Um, you know, you have, a, you have a sort of a monopoly market on parking in the city of Chicago, much like you know, the air, airport has somewhat of a monopoly on parking, at least in the general vicinity of the airport, if you want super convenient parking, they do have a monopoly on that. Um, and the consumer uh, drive is not quite as strong as of a balance in situations where you have a quasi-monopoly situation like an airport. 
Now, on that Chicago situation, that's another thing. We keep using that in a way that is not totally clean. And so <coughs> I'd like to have the clarity <coughs> to the situation in Chicago. Chicago was their own worst enemy in that process. It was their, it was their, it was their city government. They were, they were their own worst enemy. And at the end of the day, the privatization process, nor the conclusion of it, had nothing to do with being privatized. And actually, Chicago profited because you don't have to give back any money that they give you. Uh, so they kept the hundreds of millions of dollars uh, that they screwed up on by their own mismanagement. So it had nothing to do with privatization. I would agree with that. Um, I think to some extent, um, you know, the idea of privatizing this doesn't necessarily have to be um, the uh, used in a negative way. Um, but I do think that uh, the city does, the city of St. Louis does have um, a questionable history in, in acting in its own best interest sometimes, um, and we ought to be. Uh, we ought to consider bringing in the general public to weigh in, uh, at least on a matter this big. And so I'm hopeful that, um, that with Board Bill 19, we can do just that. I would hope that if that was the case, that the general public spent as many hours as all the rest of us in delving into all this so that they would have clear understanding of exactly what is going on. Well, we do have a pretty educated... Uh, how our airport place. is run. I get a lot of very educated um, communication from, from the general public on this. Oh, I'm not saying people are not educated on the thought process of what they may or may not want, but I'm saying the factual information. When you talk about, you know, I'm, I'm on another board, and it's, a, it's just a small $3 billion company, but from the outside, it may look a certain way to somebody, but if I'm on the inside, and I'm looking at the audit, I'm looking at the financial statements that happen every month, I'm looking at the personnel issues that are going on, I'm looking at the deterioration of the buildings that are there, I'm looking at so many different things in order to come to a conclusion on something. A general person who just walks down the street past the building has no clue. Here's a question I had, yes, sir. if you wouldn't mind. Do we know what percentage of city residents um, actually utilize the airport? Is there any data captured around that? We can buy data by zip code. We don't have that specifically, uh, Chairman um, uh, 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 Alderman. But we can. can I'm sorry. <laughs> I <laughs> it just elevated. Right? <laughs> I know. I appreciate sorry it. About that. Um, so we, we buy data by zip code mm -hmm. more to help us understand how far reaching the, the MSA goes for us. Yeah. So our people from Illinois come in Cape Girardeau, Springfield. So we don't, we, you know, anything within the the local MSA, we don't break out and look at that. I mean, I guess I, I probably could, but in general, the thought population is, you know, there's 350,000 people in the city of St. Louis. Obviously, on an annualized basis this year, we're going to have 8 million employments locally. So, you know, it's a smaller percentage, obviously, of the total population sure. base that uses the airport. We can get that data for you based yeah. on... Uh, I don't know, Alderman, yeah. if you've done, if, you, if there's been any survey or any anything around it's a very small just how many percentage of city residents actually yeah. use County it. residents use it more, way more than city residents use it. You know, the airport functions not only to provide travel options to individuals, um, but is really an important piece of the overall economy of Certainly. our region. And while many of our residents may not use it on a regular basis, Certainly the companies they work for, their employers and others that are using the airport to drive economic activity in our region that serves every resident in the city of St. Louis by creating jobs and creating an atmosphere of economic success. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's always important to, to err on the side of, of democracy by, by every stretch of the imagination. Um, but are you at all concerned with the precedent that this sets up? I mean, what in terms of making decisions as local lawmakers, um, you know, we see this out of Jeff City a lot, sort of de facto amendments, constitutional amendments, and, and deferring to um, votes as opposed to legislatures digging in and kind of doing the responsibility that they were elected to do. I'm just, this is an academic conversation, sure. and you can shut it down whenever you need to, but you know, I'm just wondering if you think it sets up a dangerous precedent. 
do we do we start putting every TIF agreement vote out to the people? Do we start, or is it just in what you would consider an extenuating circumstance? You know, I think uh, that's a really good question and one worth stop discussing. signs. Sure. Take a vote of the people on those. We do I'm take a curious. vote of the board of aldermen on those, which I think is quite uh, an over. Right. <laughs> and this is my point. I'm just studying sure. up. To, to um, but in this case, yeah. the airport is the single largest physical asset mm -hmm. that the city owns. And not only that, but it serves not only the general public, as we just discussed, but the um, underlying economy of the St. Louis region. Uh, it is an anomaly in and of itself. I would agree with you there. And it's, and it's, and it's importance. Um, I would not advocate for ab abdicating all of our uh, responsibilities down here, but when it comes to something as important as our airport, um, which, you know, um, as I mentioned, is, is, our, is our taxpayer's single biggest uh, asset, I think that really deserves some, some good, rigorous public discourse. And because the general public has been so engaged to some extent in questioning the process and um, you know, we owe that conversation, I think, to the general public. But do I think we should give every TIF and tax abatement? Absolutely not. Um, you know, we, we need to have, we are elected to represent the will of the people mm -hmm. that uh, got put us here, and we should do the job that we're sent down here to do. Well, and that's what the, I don't know if you were at the meeting, but Julia Bush said we cannot delegate, even on the airport, even with sure. this. I saw the we transcript. We cannot delegate yeah. our authority the way that, you know, we can do a non-binding, we can do a charter change, but at no point can we have someone else sit in and even if I said, uh, can you no, I'm aware that. come in and vote for me at the Board of Alders? I understand. Can't make he was pretty clear on that. Mm, interesting. Well, the general public, when we use the, that terminology, can be as true or as uh, idealistic as you choose it to be. So if I talked about my general public that I am privy to deal with, I may have had five questions about this process. That might be it. In neighborhood meetings, they said that's why we elected you and you go do your job and you make the best decisions. Here is what we would like to see. I hear I hear all that a lot. Here is what we would like to see uh, if there was a deal made. Uh, people would like to see more money come out of the airport. If there is more money, they'd like to see certain things done, like the streets paved and, you know, all that stuff that they talk about all the time that we never have enough money to do. Uh, they'd like to see more money in North St. Louis and, and portions of South St. Louis that it's deteriorating so bad that it makes us look bad as a city when people drive down some of our streets. People talk about things like that, but they don't talk about this process because they say that's what we pay you to do and you better keep your eye on it and you better make the right decisions. And they, that's all. If they trust you, they're okay. And they, and so I don't know about anybody else. I mean, when you talk about general public, have you been overwhelmed by concern from the public that you represent. But even here at the Board of Aldermen, we've had other issues where people really did have a lot of concern. And we knew that because they blew up our emails, the phone calls, the <coughs> letters, everything. And that has not happened in, a, in the whole year of this process. So um, I keep saying general public. Madam Chairperson, just so I'm clear, on Board Bill 19, what modifications are, are you asking for? The appropriate federal information that we're referring to. It, and then it's being inserted where? Everywhere it says Act of 2012. We asked uh, our council in the last hearing to please provide that, to update that, um, uh, reiterated that request to him as we're sitting here. I'm not sure why that wasn't done. We did the last time, I understand. Too. Yeah, we didn't do that, Madam Chairwoman. I uh, can't speak to why our council didn't provide that, uh, but I will be happy to follow up uh, before the next hearing. Um, hopefully we can coordinate times to make sure that, uh, you know, that can be done in advance. Um, I, I, it's a simple reference to a program. I mean, it's a non, it's, it's it the really doesn't. The Act reads different. 
it, it's just a name. It's just a couple of words. It, it doesn't. It's not uh, in. It doesn't pertain to the uh, structure or the meaning or the intent of the bill in any way, shape, or form. It's just referring to a federal. We could even remove the reference entirely. Uh, it's. It, it doesn't relate to the intent uh, or the uh, result of, the, of passing the bill. Mm -hmm. I mean, so but I'm, I'm happy to reiterate the request to our council to to to, uh, to provide that change, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Clerk. If you don't mind following up with him I too, I, we we did ask him in the last hearing. I'm surprised it wasn't done. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you all on with it so I'd be clear. So where it says modernization and reform act 2012, it, it, it shouldn't be 2012. Well, under the Trump administration, that that has uh, moved forward and changed in name. Oh, so it doesn't exist some. anymore. It does exist. It's been altered. Yeah, it's I mean, a program it's just a name. It's I mean, a it's really just anything. a different name now. I mean, the, the Trump okay. administration is looking to expand privatization okay. in a general sense, and airport okay. privatization is one of those areas that, that uh, our federal government is looking to expand options mm -hmm. in. And okay. so there has been a change to the name of that and mm -hmm. some expansion of the powers associated with it, again, um, since 2012, uh, under the current administration, right. it, it was initially a pilot program that was limited to whether it was a large hub, medium, or small right. hub. Yeah. There was numbers like it could only be one large hub, two or three medium hubs, and three or four small hubs. It's no longer a, pro a pilot program under the new name, and it no longer limits the number of airports that can engage in looking at the process. And so the language doesn't change the intent, but it changed the facts. Not exactly. I mean, it's referring because it, if the systems. reference would it would be a fact. <coughs> okay. So I would so people would go out and to look for the ref this reference, right? And then it would not be a valid reference. Would that be correct? Because the name has changed, and you're saying it's been expanded, and so on and so forth. Well, I mean, the Programs intent of the bill changed. is to provide a. Um, I'm just trying to be technical. Vote, but yes, um, you know, we could even remove that whole section and just say that you know. Uh, an ordinance requiring a citywide vote uh, in the event of privatizing St. Louis Lambert International Airport by leasing, blah, 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 period. Um, we did put pursuant to, um, it was, uh, that was uh, the federal program until uh, the Trump administration changed it. We could but very easily change just that it does not change the intent of the bill uh, in any way, shape, or form. But for the general public to be able to reference it, yes, and I, again, we can clarify with the, with the, uh, council, or the council to please mm -hmm. put in the current reference uh, for the benefit of the general public to look up the current federal guidelines on that. On that. Okay, let's get, uh, let me, let me just, just real quick and I'll go back to you. So let's put clarity to this. It was changed because there was a study done that indicated how much money was required to bring the airports in the United States of America up to a better standard of operating. And more airports were having challenges. And so this pilot program that they talked about, I think they allowed 12 altogether, that could have been in that. I think it was nine. Was it nine? Could, but I could yeah, be. Yeah, it, it, it was nine or 12. Yeah. So, so after coming up with that data, and I read the whole article, the trillions of dollars that was required to even closely come to bringing the airports to standard, it was realized that these airports needed better opportunities to go and find private money to help them with what they needed to do. Madam Chairwoman, and so it's not about Trump, it's not about him, because you know I could care less about him, but it, uh, it, the program was changed, and so it has a new name, it has new information in it, and I want people to always have the right information. And we do have 457 current public airports in the United States. And even under the expansion, our airport is the only airport in the country that has applied for that expanded program. Now, that's not totally true either. Could we? Uh, it's not totally true. Has there been any other airport? Not totally true. We currently, we currently have a number of airports are operating in some form or fashion of privatization. Correct. But not under this program. Not under generally. this yeah. program today, but we also now have uh, 
the last thing I read, we're looking at close to 16 airports that are going to go into a full-fledged privatization opportunity. The, the, the P3s, there's a big difference between the P3 and the privatization program as we know it. In this. The P3s take various maybe sections of your airport, whether it's a... Um, and we don't, know what, we don't know what we're going to do yet either. Right, but under this program, yeah. th your only opportunity under this program is to privatize. Yeah. It's not to do a P3. That doesn't mean a P3 couldn't be considered outside of this. But for this particular program that we are engaged in, it is for the privatization. We are engaged in a process right. that has no conclusion. We may not do anything because it would not have enough value. It would not change what we consider to, uh, to be significant change. So there would be no reason to do anything. Or we may do something, and it may not include a privatized operation. Right. We may do a number of different things. We don't know that yet. Because if somebody is only going to be able to come in here and do 20% of what we need done, then we just have to limp along and figure that out on our own, OK? If somebody is going to come in here and they can only offer me twice of what we receive already annually, then we need to say goodbye. Because there's no reason to change. That, those are common sense decisions that must be made in this process. And so we have no idea whether we're going to do anything yet because we're not at that point. And we all know that. We're not at that point. We're not even ready to put out, for me, and you know I, I'm really on this environmental part too, and they keep playing around with me. They don't know I'm getting angry. And that environmental piece is really important to me because you can end up in a situation where there's a ton of money that needs to be spent. And I don't want, in privatization or not, I don't want us to be in that position, okay? So tell me the truth, give me the analysis so I can look at it and evaluate. So there are a lot of things that we still got to look at. So that's just critical for me. But anyway, I'm confused. I said that up front, and I need to figure all this out. Okay. Anything else? I'm going to schedule a meeting for next week, which will be available. Yes, I can. Uh, I will be tomorrow. Next week is the 4th of July weekend. Um, or week. Early in the week. Early in the week. Sure, I can be available. Okay. So send me a couple of times, and then I'll see. I'll send it out to committee so we can make sure we have a quorum. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and thank you for hearing the bill today. Okay. So what's next? Board bill number 56. All right, good morning. Good Trans morning. Commission and Commerce members. <coughs> I will be presenting board bill 56. I'm the airport deputy director of finance administration, Antonio Strong. Uh, last month, the uh, Comptroller's Office presented a draft board bill to sell bonds to complete our pre-approved project for fiscal year 20 and 21. Uh, I'll be happy to report that that transaction did close this morning. Good. Yeah. You so, made it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this board bill requests your approval for a public works ordinance to kind of move forward with the projects. Uh, we will release bids and we will commence with the construction or acquire the assets. And so those projects are listed on Exhibit A of your package. Uh, the funding sources for the projects include the amounts that are also listed in your package, approximately $6.5 million from the ADF uh, Airport Development Fund, and then $23.2 million is um, the amount from the bond issuance, mm -hmm. and the rest of the funding sources will come from airport improvement grants. So at this time, we respectfully request your approval of this draft board bill for a public works improvement program. Mm -hmm. um. We went through a lot on that bill, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I was glad to see at the airport commission meeting when you made your presentation, uh, it had a lot of uh, good projects in it. So um, what I'd like to do is to see if any of our members have questions. Alderman Boyd? No questions. Uh, Alderman, oh, I think he was just sitting here. Okay. Alderman Oldenburg? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm not the power. No, I have no questions. <laughs> but, but it, I don't think we have enough people to vote on anything. But. Uh, what do we need? Four.
و خرد بکنه بعد Perhaps in the interest of stalling, right. I will ask the question, maybe. Um, you mentioned that uh, the, other than the six and a half and the 23, approximately 23 million, the balance of the sources to execute on this is coming from grants. Have those grants been awarded? Is that cash in hand? Is there a bridge needed or? So we apply for the grants as the projects come on board. Like if we're getting ready to start one of the projects here, like yep. maybe one is a runway project, uh, as we get ready to start that project, we'll apply for the grant at that point in time. But we okay. have had, we have quarterly meetings with the FAA and we walk through upcoming projects sure. that we anticipate. So you're on their schedule. Right, and we get capacity. a general understanding of okay. one, what is the pocket of money available? Do these fall within a high priority of theirs? Uh, and if it's a one-way project, one of the things that we have an agreement on is that if the FAA dollars do not come through for a one-way project, that means they did not deem that it was a security issue or a, a, sure. a, a safety issue. Uh, then we would postpone that project until such time they had the money. So you don't start money. construction, obviously, no, until, you, until, you until we know we've got it right. Okay. Because we normally we also get design fees Makes as part of the grant. So and, and now they're doing a lot of them as design and construction as one grant. Okay. Yeah, we recently had that meeting with FAA. I want to say about April, okay. uh, where they assured us that there was no issues with what we were presenting as projects. But clearly, you're doing some design. So you know what it costs, right? There's we don't do the design. We, what we typically do is we have a, a, a contract that goes out for bid every three years. And it's this right now, it's with CMT. They're a design firm that generally deals with runway construction all over the country. Uh -huh. So uh, they don't. They look at the condition of an existing runway, and they put a dollar amount on that, but it's not necessarily a design. So they're an on-call. Uh, so they put an approximation, but then after you get awarded and move forward, the design solidifies, you, you understand the exact cost. We do a pre-bid okay. and get all Perfect. of that. Yes. Awesome. Very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good question. Thank you. Um, we'll come back to Alderman Cohen. I don't have any questions. All right. Okay. I have none, because I've seen it before. So I'm good. Making a motion? Yes, sir. And I'll make a motion. We pass board bills. 56 Second. So they moved a second to approve board bill number 56. Previous roll. We haven't had, we haven't yes. had one yet. Yeah, yeah, we, we did. It's not here. But yeah. Paul Vaughn Middlebrook is not here. Oh, okay. okay. do it. I'm not we did. We did have a previous. We did. Did we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Well, we did. on the minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, you're smart. Mm -hmm. I would draw my judgment. Thank you. You don't hear that too often, Joe. <laughs> okay, so board bill number 56 has been moved and passed. We'll just ask recommendation. Our next Thanks, guys. board bill number 57. Good afternoon, Alderman Alder Woman. Um, I'm Robert Salarano. I'm the Airport Properties Division Manager. We're requesting your approval today for a, the board bill with a, for a shared right shuttle concession agreement with Airport Best Taxi Service, LLC. This uh, concession provides transportation to prearranged groups of travelers. They work with conventions and other visiting groups. And they work with the CBC quite a bit as well to arrange transportation. It's called Explore St. Louis now. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. With Explore St. Louis. Uh, and uh, the premises we give them as part of this, there's two booths. There's a 1,100 square feet in Terminal 1 and 80 square feet in Terminal 2, and that's where they manage their operation. Uh, the term of this agreement is five years, beginning July 1st, 2019, and ending June 30th, 2024. Either party may cancel this agreement upon 90 days' notice. Uh, there was a competitive bid process with bids due March, uh, in March 2019, and one bid was received. ACDBE utilization on this, the Airport Concession Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, is 100% uh, Airport Best Taxi Service LLC is a certified ACDBE. Revenue to the airport will be just the, the percentage fee, which ranges from contract year one, 9.5%, to contract year five, and 11% of their gross receipts. We respectfully request your approval of this shared ride con shuttle concession agreement. All right, 
um, let's see, the questions off the board. Sure. Um, can you translate those percentages in dollars? Yes, sir. I mean, depending on how, on their gross receipts, of course. I mean, the gross receipt in 2018 for the, the current provider, which was a, another best transportation, um, was about $742,000. Under the 9.5%, if that gross receipt holds true in the next, uh, it'll be about $70,582 uh, in revenue to the airport. Okay. And, and say again, who had the contract? Who has it currently? Airport Best Transportation. They operate under the Go Best name, uh, which is separate from Airport Best Taxi Services, LLC. Completely separate company. Yeah. And you say you only received one bid? Yes, from the, uh, from the provider now. Our, the Airport Best Taxi Service okay. LLC was the only Any particular reason why the current provider did not bid? Right. They, they've seen a decline uh, in, their, in their revenue as a result of transportation networks coming into play. Mm -hmm. And so typically this sets up larger groups where you've got maybe eight or ten people traveling and they rather than get two separate taxis or maybe two separate Ubers, you'll see them take that. But they also uh, used to handle a lot of two or three uh, individuals, and you just see more and more people morphing into transportation network companies. So there is still a niche for this. Uh, we knew they were not going to rebid. They had indicated to us that they uh, were choosing not to rebid on it. But we still felt that it was a service that we wanted to have and available to the consumers who like to book it ahead of time and may have a group. So we put it out to see what right. interest was there. And if I may piggyback on that answer, um, one of the th or we did a number of things when we looked at this concession um, to adjust the requirements to try to attract uh, bidders and you know success in, in attracting the one bidder. Uh, usually most of our concessions have a minimum annual guarantee versus a percentage fee. We removed the minimum annual guarantee requirement from this so there's only the percentage fee that the concessionaire will pay. We eased up on some of the operational requirements for booth staffing and things like that. We wanted that to be more as needed um, and to operate with their customer base and what they're expecting in their reservations. Um, and we also reduced such some things like the bond requirement uh, is down to $10,000 for the payment and performance bond. So some things like that to make it more attractive to an operation in a smaller business. A customer can't walk up and say like a taxi or uh -huh. like a TNC, they have to actually book a reservation for right. this. So we want to make sure that we're, we're being fair to all entities at the airport right. that operate as a ground transportation provider. It, it sounds like you went out your way to create more competition for this bid, yeah. but you only got one. Yeah. How many vendors do we have that locally that probably could participate? You know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a specialty niche because you do have taxis and you have TNCs and then you do have shuttles like, for instance, in Columbia, you have the um, Tiger Shuttle, you know, which is a shuttle bus if you're going from, if you arrive in St. Louis and you're going to Columbia, Missouri, mm -hmm. most people will book the Tiger Shuttle out of Columbia to pick okay. you up. <clears throat> so this is a limited niche and if you look at the, when, when the prior concession was there, best transportation, uh, I think when we got that bid, they were the only bidder. They were the only bidder as yeah. well on that. And this historically has been a difficult concession. Even before the advent of yeah. TNCs, uh, we haven't seen a lot of bidders on this. Uh, it can be a pretty, you know, we did what we could to reduce a lot of the requirements. But one of the things is, I mean, it is an investment. Vans uh, yeah. and those kind of services, that, that is an, an expense. And the lease agreements and everything else that they have. Which is why we did the five year because we felt yeah. that someone was going to have to make an investment. And it's not just one van you have to have, you have to have multiple ones. Right. So we, instead of doing what would normally be a three year concession in a lot of cases, we did a five year concession so that they could amortize that investment over a longer period. Last question. Um, I know a lot of government regulations on procurement, you know, one bid is almost unacceptable. What kind of what do you have to do to convince the FFA or mm -hmm. whoever that you know it is what it is? Yeah. How do you do you have to just do you do you have to yeah. justify that? The, uh, well, in the case we we issued the RFP, we obviously post it. We hold meetings. We mm -hmm. always do open uh, bid meetings so people can come. And I think there were a couple of people that came. There were a, there were the the, the
preferred provider came right. and this company came and we send it out to you know a number of the companies yeah. we think might be able to do this um, and it, so it's an open process uh, it's a process that this time you know even started a year before just sort of trying to see what the take the temperature of different companies in st. Louis to see if they were interested um, so it, it's an ongoing public process and we do set uh, it, because this is a concession there is a we work with the <coughs> the federal program to set the ACDBE participation. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's 100% because it is a minority company. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> Thank you. No further questions. Uh, I'll move the call. Not to worry, I mean, isn't the Taxi Commission still part of any of this stuff? The Taxi Commission still exists, but they regulate the taxis. This is not a taxi service, it's a shuttle service, so they're not part of this. Okay. No, I'm just curious. Yeah. Oh, it's a uh, Alderman Cohen? No questions. Alderman Eldenburg? Just real quick for my own um, curiosity, are the, are the hotel and rental car shuttles under separate contracts? How does, how does that arrangement work? Yeah, the rental car shuttles are under the rental car concession agreement. We have currently, okay. I believe, seven concessions for rental cars. Okay. And then we also have uh, hotel and motel shuttles under ground transportation permits. Got it. And those are subject to ordinance, the ground transportation ordinance that comes before the committee. Great. And they all pay. They all pay. <laughs> Good. Absolutely. Good. All right. Thank Excellent. You. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. I have no additional questions. Um, so I'll accept a motion. Well, then I'll make a motion. Second. Previous roll. Move to second. Previous roll. Board bill number 57 has been uh, approved to be passed with recommendation. I would like to ask one thing, Chairwoman. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I know it's been asked of us because there are some new members to try and put together an airport tour. Yes. Uh, so we would like to, perhaps at your meeting next week, if you could ask for dates. Once we get past the 4th of July holiday and we've got the refunding done and we've got all of these other projects on okay. I think we can find the time to work that out. So if you could ask your committee members, maybe at the meeting next week, what dates may be applicable or either send out, okay. then we'll try to work around those. So anytime once we get past you know, starting that July, what is that, the 8th or whatever that Monday right. is, then we, we'll be open to try and accommodate. That would be very helpful. Okay, yeah. we'll do that. Okay. okay. All right. And can you possibly ask, um, like we did the last time, somebody from FAA to speak with us for a few minutes? Uh, sure. I'll, uh, I'll see if That was very in. helpful. Okay. I can okay. do that. They, right. I did have... Um, uh, Mr. Payne also asked if perhaps he could attend one, and I told him that would be fine. I'll let him know when it's scheduled. Yeah, okay. So, we would open it up there as well. Rhonda, do you have a email blast list for your uh, airport commission meetings? Do I have a distribution? Like, yeah. a, yes. Can you add me to it, please? Uh, I guess we can. I, I, I think so. I don't, I think so. Just email, yeah. right? Okay. And that would be... Uh, Typically, we email them the uh, we send the package out that we also email it so you would so you would see the email come forward that would have the commission package. For as a matter of fact, it should go out today. Uh, so okay. if also we also add to that, well, you might as well add the whole committee. Okay, no we'll do that. We'll change. we'll add the transportation and commerce committee to that email. <coughs> Just we give us Kathy. <coughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, any other business? Thank you. Make a motion we adjourn. Second. Move the second. All those are in favor. Aye. Aye. See you later. Thank you, Doki. All this paper. Everything you said was intriguing. Mm -hmm.